Today on The Power of Place, we journey into the geographic realm of China and its sphere. Over one-fifth of all the people on Earth reside in China, home to one of the world's oldest continuous civilizations. We begin our program in the province of Guangdong, on China's southern coast. This province alone is responsible for more than 20% of China's total exports. As modernization efforts succeed in doubling China's national wealth each year, it is Guangdong, far from the politics of Beijing, that has benefited most significantly. Du Nangji makes Nike shoes, one of tens of thousands of Nike employees scattered around the world. Du Nangji and his fellow workers are a small part of the Chinese link in the chain of global production. The reason I came to work here is simply to earn a living. I came from Chenggu in Zeshuan province. I didn't have much of a job back home. I've been working at the number two factory for two and a half years. I feel good about it. My ambition is to become a manager. Most of these workers are like Du Nangji. Until the factories came, they either scratched out a living from farming or had no work at all. Now, life has changed dramatically. Although we have to work hard for eight to nine, sometimes 10 hours a day, I still feel very happy. I live in a dormitory, but I feel as if I'm living at home. 150 million Chinese have left their homes to work in places like Guangdong. China has changed. It's, it's uh, one of the most exciting places to be doing business in the world right now. Uh, it is not easy. It's, it's uh, very different than doing business in the United States or a lot of Western type companies. In fact, even different than doing business in uh, Hong Kong. The global production system is bringing enormous urban and social change to China. Nike is typical of a global production system. Modern transport and communications mean it can choose a production site far away from its raw materials or customers. This factory has been established in response to government initiatives and encouragement aimed at attracting outside industry to China. The workers here make almost half a million shoes a month. The factory is owned by a Taiwanese company and operated jointly by Taiwanese and Chinese management. The factory is located in Guangdong province in southern China, near the capital Guangzhou, just 100 kilometers from Hong Kong. Like much of China, Guangdong offers cheap labor. But Guangdong province has a key advantage, its proximity to Hong Kong, a gateway to the world markets. Guangdong has virtually none of the raw materials for making shoes, but they can be imported by road from Hong Kong. This leather came from Venezuela. The rubber from Malaysia. The synthetics came from Taiwan, Japan, Germany, and America. So why go to all the trouble to make shoes in China? In part, 
the pattern of global production systems are determined by cheap labor. The diffusion from Japan to South Korea to Taiwan and then subsequently to other parts of Southeast Asia is driven by seeking low wage labor. And the move into China was associated with very low, in inexpensive uh, wage costs in, in, in China. Compared with many parts of the world, such as America, Europe, or Japan, Du Nang Ji earns little, the equivalent of just 80 US dollars a month. However, by Chinese standards, he and his fellow workers earn a healthy wage. The changes the new industry brings to China are dramatic. By the mid-1990s, more than half a million factories were at work in Guangdong province, supporting a population of 65 million people. The region pulsates with development. Drive for an hour through the countryside, and the construction activity seems endless. It is an emerging uh, huge growth country, uh, very exciting. There is building going on everywhere. There, uh, the whole province, the whole country basically is under construction. In the capital, Guangzhou, you can still find traces of the past. European traders call the city Canton and use it as a base for Far Eastern dealings. But the past is giving way to the future. Towering hotels and commercial buildings show China's ambition to play a key role on the world economic stage. But that ambition means social change. Worker education is becoming more important. Among the poorly educated, not everyone who comes looking for work will find it. They're lucky enough, they can find some uh, jobs where nobody can, should do, nobody would like to do. Like wash the fences on the highway, you know, and uh, to work on the construct, construction field. Things like that, you know, not so stable. When, you know, when economic you know, has some uh, problems, and the chances will decrease, and then they have to go home. Nike is able to harness low-wage structures through use of its flexible production system and with the encouragement and support of China's government. Nike doesn't own these factories. Production can be moved at very short notice. Nike has a system of subcontracting. It's the system that's flexible. Uh, and they are able to uh, enjoy the sort of benefits of flexibility as well as the benefits of having very inexpensive labor, uh, all in the same system. That means Nike could stop producing here if wages became too expensive, or if China couldn't provide the necessary infrastructure. A lack of the everyday facilities that make it easier to operate a modern business is still a major stumbling block for China. It's investing heavily in areas such as fiber optic communications. It's trying to catch up with the demands of companies like Nike, which rely on state-of-the-art technology. Orders for Nike footwear are placed in its headquarters in Beaverton in the United States. Complex communication systems allow the head office to arrange raw materials and allocate production to factories around the globe. But when it's time to deliver the goods, China's lack of infrastructure can become a problem. Transportation, that is there's still a huge problem here. Uh, we truck all of our material in. Well, not only are we doing that, everybody else is too. There are huge infrastructure projects going on throughout China and they're very slow in constructing a road. Uh, they do a lot of uh, manual labor as far as crushing rocks and putting down cement by wheelbarrows and stuff, and it takes quite a long time. All Nike shoes made here in China are sent by road to Hong Kong for export. 
When it arrives at Cargo Management Services, the footwear is repacked to meet orders from many countries. As these barcodes are read, Nike's main computer on the other side of the world is automatically told the order has been filled. The computer is able to track a consignment of shoes as it is packed in containers and dispatched around the globe. Uh, information is actually quite important because, you know, uh, as a customer, they need to know what was being bought, what was being on the water, and what is supposed to be a rifle at the port area. And as it goes through Hong Kong, the vessels and the, and the, and the port are already set up to take care of all of this, you know, uh, movement. And basically, it helps to make Hong Kong a much more ideal location to move all this stuff that are already produced in China. Communications and transport are the glue which hold a global production system together. It links geographically diverse sections of the operation. Ordering, manufacture, sales, and marketing can all be coordinated from one central location. Its flexible system of rapidly switching production sites is playing a key role in the development of regional economies as they put in place the infrastructure new business demands. And with that development comes massive changes to the way of life in areas like Guangdong. China is divided into provinces and uh, autonomous regions for the minorities. And the provinces on the coast are the ones that have been caught up in this incredible Pacific Rim development that is transforming the country's economy. Guangdong, on almost all fronts, is in the lead. Uh, it's a province that is as large as some countries. Population, uh, about 75 million. Uh, that's larger than the population of France or Italy or the United Kingdom in just a province of China. And it's anchored by two major cities, actually three. There is uh, Guangzhou, the old Canton, where we saw what was happening in this case displayed. But at the other end is uh, Hong Kong, with its immediate neighbor, uh, the most fast-growing urban area in the world, uh, Shenzhen. So what was said here about the transformation of China by these hundreds of thousands of factories that have been built along the Pacific Rim is nowhere better exemplified than here in Guangdong. One problem not mentioned in this case, but evident if you looked at all at the countryside we see with all the building going on, is the um, growing regional disparities in China. Coastal China is going in one direction. Some areas of interior China are actually going in the other direction, not just comparatively, but in reality. And so the, the contrast between the wealth and the influence and the power, economic power of regions in China, that contrast is constantly growing because of the sorts of things we just have seen here, the link to the global production system along the Pacific Rim. That may make, a, that could be a major problem for Chinese governments of the future coping with this contrast that is going to keep drawing migrants from the interior to the coast where they may become disaffected. Uh, with the lifestyles they've left behind and the kind of government that rules.